When you're starting out your career as a software engineer, there are some misconceptions that unfortunately way too many people believe. This is mine and Alex's attempt to share these mistakes so that you can save a bunch of time if you're getting started out. We've worked with thousands of engineers and here is the advice that we've shared so many times that I thought it's worth packaging up into a video. The first mistake that we see too many engineers make is getting stuck in tutorial hell. Tutorials are a good way to get started with a project, but the real test of a programmer is if they can build something without the guidance of a tutorial. The best way to get good at programming is to actually build things. And tutorials can help you, but you need to actually take off the training wheels at some point and do it on your own. The analogy I like to use here is that tutorials are kind of like training wheels on a bike, right? You, the eventual goal is that you wanna be able to ride this bike on your own and experience the freedom of just going without any support. No matter how good the tutorial is, you are still relying on training wheels. And when you take those off, when you take the tutorials away, it will be uncomfortable. You might fall. It will be a little bit challenging, but that's really the only way that you'll get to the point of being an independent programmer. And this might be a little bit weird coming from me because I actually got my start on YouTube by creating literally dozens of tutorials for Android and Kotlin. And so I'm definitely not saying that tutorials have no value. I think that tutorials are great because they solve a really clearly packaged, predefined problem. But the real learning will happen when you take that tutorial and then either deliberately break it and see how it breaks or extend the tutorial on your own. Just following the tutorial blindly, that is not enough. That skill of decomposition won't be there in a tutorial because everything is handed to you. Along the same lines, certificate collection is the next major misconception that we see too many engineers have. Certificates are basically a more structured form of tutorials, right? They usually have some authority figure, whether it's Google or Coursera or LinkedIn Learning, and they're defining some curriculum and some exit criteria. And if you do all that, then you get some fancy digital certificate that you can then show off on LinkedIn or Facebook. And you might feel good that, okay, now I get all these people who are applauding me um, or cheering me on for having done something meaningful. And yeah, don't get me wrong. I think certificates do have value. And in fact, I literally have a course on LinkedIn Learning about retrofit on Android, which is some library for networking. And pretty much every week, someone will tag me on LinkedIn saying, hey, I just completed this course, check out the certificate. And those always make me happy. It's great you got some certificate, but the same theory applies, right? Just doing certificates will not give you enough confidence or will not give you enough skill to be a strong programmer on, on its own. The issue here is the same as what we talked about for tutorial hell which is that a good software engineer is adaptable and nimble. They're able to figure things out on their own. And that trait can't easily be captured in a certificate. So if you have to choose between spending your time on a certificate or spending your time on actually building something, you should always choose building something. In fact, I'll say a stronger statement. You should not spend your time getting a certificate unless it's a hard requirement for a job that you really care about. In the nine years I've been working as a software engineer at a startup, at Pinterest, and at Facebook, I've literally never seen a certificate be used as a determining factor when deciding to hire someone or not hire someone. The third issue I see a lot is that software engineers are always in a search for the perfect or hottest technology to build something. The thing is, there is no single perfect technology, and I can guarantee you that there are many different options which will all allow you to build a legitimately great solution. It doesn't have to be tied to a technology. I talked about this actually in my video about becoming a tech lead. You really should avoid tying your identity to a technology, and that's actually hard to do because there's always some hot new thing coming out, especially if you're, for example, in the world of JavaScript, there's, it feels like every month there's something new to learn. Or if you're an Android, Google is always coming out with a recommendation of how you should design your app or some new library that you should explore. In particular, what I recommend is that rather than getting stuck in decision paralysis, just pick a technology and run with it. And if you really have no opinion, just pick whatever you're most familiar with at the time that you're starting the project. Or if you're starting from scratch and you really have no opinion about what to choose, just pick what your friend or someone in your college or, or your work environment already knows and just copy them. The idea is that the technology you pick doesn't really matter. What matters is what you do with that. So now you've gotten to the point where you're actually building something, which is great. That's where you should be. You should spend most of your time in the building phase. The last mistake that I see a lot of new engineers make is to try and build everything in secret. The idea here, I think, is that people are really nervous about talking about their idea or their project because they're afraid it'll get stolen. And 
their thinking is that, you know, I'll build this out in secret and then when it's ready, I'll reveal it to the world and a lot of people will get excited and, and use it and I'll become rich and famous or whatever else might happen. A few years ago, I actually hopped on a call with someone who was looking for advice about something they were building. And so I hopped on this call and very quickly it turned into basically them pitching me and saying, hey, would you be interested in building this app for us? Which was unexpected for me. So I asked them, okay, tell me the idea. Like, why are you excited by it? Um, what, what's the pitch? And they replied and they said, before we tell you the idea, we need you to sign an NDA and some other documents that I didn't even look into because immediately I was turned off. Like the, the, the harsh reality is that your idea is almost certainly not worth stealing. What matters much more than the idea is your execution and your ability to find people who would actually be interested in using what you're building. I would even argue that building in secret is actually detrimental to what you're trying to do. When you're not getting feedback about what you're building, you're missing out on valuable data about whether your project or your app is actually solving a real problem. Also, if you build in public, you can get motivation, either from potential users who you're interacting with or from people who could help you, collaborators or co-founders who might be able to hop on and um, shape the direction of what you're thinking. For example, Alex and I are actually happy to be open and transparent about what we're trying to build with our startup. We're really bullish on the idea of collaborative learning as a way for technical talent to get better at their jobs. The collaborative learning or peer-to-peer -peer learning is the idea that employees actually have a lot of valuable knowledge in their head. So how can we lower the activation energy for people to be able to share that knowledge with their team, their company, or maybe even people outside the company as a way to help everyone get better faster. And that learning will be much more engaging compared to some third party anonymous expert who you might not have a relationship with. And we're specifically focused right now on soft skill and leadership content because we really feel like there's a lack of content for engineers in that domain. There's a lot of content about Android or Python or whatever your tactical content is. We're really focused on career navigation for engineers. Since I quit my job a few weeks ago, the number one goal for Alex and I has been talking to people about what makes sense in this domain. Is there a product here that we could sell to a business and we can maybe offer it as a way to retain their top engineers better? Or we can offer an app directly for consumers as a way to help people navigate their career and make it free for everyone. Those are the four mistakes I see most commonly made by engineers who are new to the industry. Getting stuck in tutorial hell, collecting a bunch of certificates, trying to find the perfect tech, and building in secret. As you can see, the common theme here is that you should just spend your time building stuff. It will be uncomfortable and you will get stuck. That's the reality of building stuff. But then you Google for things, you look for things on Stack Overflow, you ask for help. That is where the real learning happens. It doesn't happen when you debate about technology. It doesn't happen when you are following a tutorial. And it doesn't happen when you're posting about some certificate you got on LinkedIn. So if you are building something, let me know in the comments what it is and also share it with the tech career growth community. I'll leave links for that if you wanna join also in the comments. If you found this helpful, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.